Welcome back to Movie Rewind. Today, we will be looking back at the movie Get Hard. It opens up with James. He has a large staff of servants and gardeners working in his mansion. He loves to start his day with martial arts practice. Life seems ideal for James. He is intelligent, has a successful career, significant wealth, and a stunning fiancé named Alyssa. It turns out that Alyssa is his boss's daughter. With all that, James's life seems to be the best one a person could possibly have. Then, the story moves on to another man named Darnell. He is the complete opposite of James. He is so broke that he calls his friends just to get a loan. He had looked everywhere for a loan to fund his business, but was still unsuccessful. Darnell even asks his daughter to help him borrow money from her school friends. His wife gets frustrated when she sees this. She advised him to save money rather than take out more loans and increase their debt. Darnell went straight to his car wash business after dropping his daughter off at school. This car wash is situated in the basement parking space of James's office. Everyone was clapping for James when he arrived at work that day. He had just achieved something huge for the office. James was summoned to the boss's room. His future father-in-law is Martin, who praised James's superb work, which contributed to a $28 million profit. Martin then commands him to start addressing him as father. It moves James so much that he gives Martin a tight hug. James is about to leave work with his car when Darnell runs into him. He was shocked to see a black man appear in front of him and assumed he was a criminal. It turned out all he really wanted to do was give James his car key. Darnell gets offended, but he sees it as an opportunity. He makes James apologize for being a little racist earlier. He then asks him to put money into his car wash company. In just a few months, he claimed the investment capital of $30,000 would not just be obtained, but also turned a profit. Sadly, James had no interest in continuing, so he left. James and Alyssa celebrated their union anniversary that evening. The gathering was elegant. Unfortunately, the FBI arrived and arrested James for embezzling company funds. James was perplexed because, as far as he knew, he had done nothing fraudulent. Despite his attempts to clarify that they were mistaken, he was still detained. The following day, Martin, an illegal representative, paid James a visit. However, the attorney was not on James's side. He told James to simply admit guilt. James was irritated because he was confident in his innocence. During the trial, James chose to plead not guilty, which ultimately earned him a 10-year sentence in the most severe prison in the country. He was given 30 days to process the files for an appeal if he wanted to. As a result, he served a 30-day city prison sentence with a tracking monitor on his ankle. These were tough times for James. He no longer woke up happy. He would sob and scream in sorrow throughout the day. This happened for several days before having an epiphany. He made the decision to flee America. He disguised himself and made a run for it. But then he stops to meet Alyssa at a restaurant where he begs her to leave her luxurious life and flee with him. Alyssa refuses and the police catch up to James. James made the decision to meet Darnell because he accepted that there was no chance of getting out of the city. After explaining his predicament, he asks Darnell to teach him how to survive. Darnell was speechless because he had never been in prison and it was offensive that James assumed he had been just because he's black. Again, Darnell saw his opportunity. As long as James was prepared to pay him $30,000, he would assist. James agreed right away, considering $30,000 to be nothing. Darnell tells his wife about the deal, and she is enraged. Darnell also couldn't teach James about what it's like to be a prisoner because the fact that he was about to con James made her disappointed. He had no idea what it was like to live in prison, but he was determined to make that money. He contacted his cousin, who was previously incarcerated. After getting the details, Darnell was prepared to train James. At James's home the following day, James was questioned by Darnell about his experience with self-defense. He tries to show off, but instead just proves that he has been wasting his time all these years 
because he really cannot fight to save his life. Darnell turns the cellar of James's house into a unique room that imitates a real prison. In addition, he altered James's entire yard and even added an electric fence. There are now only 21 days until James actually has to go to jail. The following afternoon, James called Martin and inquired about the status of the investigation. Martin asked about Darnell when he overheard his voice on the call. James then opens up and tells him about his new friend, who was helping him get ready for prison life. Martin appeared frightened when the call was cut off. This is when it is revealed that he is the big bad guy all along. He used the funds from the investors to settle his company's debts and then set James up to take the fall. He had not liked that James was dating his daughter, so it was the perfect plan to get rid of him. He gave his bodyguard orders to follow James and Darnell around at all times. Meanwhile, James continued to train for days. Darnell took James out to test his fighting skills, but despite his diligence, he couldn't get the hang of it. Back home, he made an attempt to break out of his imaginary prison, but he was unsuccessful. It is now 10 days to the appeal trial. Darnell gives affirming words to James and tells him that he is prepared for his final test that evening. He explained that if he could pass the test, he was certain that James would be able to survive while incarcerated. James had to escape his fake prison cell during a fake riot as a part of the test. Darnell had created a prison simulation by employing the use of housekeepers and gardeners. James did very poorly. By the time it was over, Darnell was startled to discover a knife lodged in James's forehead. Darnell drove to his home in a panic so his wife could attend to James's injury. James was invited to stay for dinner. When James leaves, Darnell's wife tells him he is not ready to survive in prison. The following day, Darnell takes James to his cousin Russell, who is an ex-convict. Darnell begged Russell to speak with his prison buddies to secure James's safety inside the home. Russell says his black friends will not help James because he is white. Russell then suggested that James go ask for assistance from the white people's gang. When they get there, Darnell waits outside while James enters alone. The gang members thought James was an undercover police when he asked for their assistance and began to torture him. Thankfully, Darnell caught on and came to his rescue. Having escaped, they both went to a cafe. Darnell queried James about whether he had actually stolen money from the business. James made an effort to explain the specifics of the case, and by the time he was done, Darnell came to the conclusion that Martin was the only person who seemed off with his explanation. They now realize that Martin is the mastermind, but have no way to prove it. James raises the idea of finding Martin's hidden computer at the storage facility in the office. They took the computer, but Martin's bodyguard appeared and pointed a gun at them. He takes the computer from them and leaves. From this encounter, James can see that Darnell is not the tough guy he claims to be. The next day, James made the decision to join Russell's gang in the hopes that it would buy him their protection in jail. Darnell finds him and apologizes for leading him on. He tells him to reconsider and instead focus on exposing Martin. It is now only 20 hours left before James is picked up by the police, but James agrees and goes with Darnell. Darnell explained that Martin's car was filled with sand when it came to his car wash. This indicated that Martin must have the computer hidden on his boat. They go there to investigate. Turns out that they are right. They manage to sneak in and grab the computer, but Martin stops them and holds them hostage. Just then, all of the training clicks and James begins to fight immediately as if he had been possessed by a great fighter. He takes them all out, but Alyssa comes in and tries to distract him. When Martin comes in, James reveals to them that his ankle monitor must have triggered the police when the boat went out past city limits, and as such, they would already be close by. The data in the computer was examined by the police when they arrived. James was freed, and Martin was taken into custody. But then the police discovered that James was carrying an illegal weapon, which led to his arrest. He had to spend six months in prison for it. By the time he came out, 
his $30,000 investment in Darnell's car wash had yielded outstanding profits. The movie ends on a wholesome note, with Darnell outside waiting for his best friend to come out of Ed's jail.